There are so many factors to consider when it comes to tree health. However, there's one that comes before everything else. But ironically, it's so obvious that oftentimes it's just overlooked. A tree can be planted in perfect soil with the right amount of nutrients and enough water, but if it doesn't get enough light, that tree will struggle and eventually die, no matter how good the other conditions are. This apple tree is really struggling. It's been in the ground for about 10 years, it's growing lopsided, it doesn't produce apples, and each year it's fallen victim to fungal diseases that cause it to drop its leaves early. If you're trying to figure out how to help this tree, you might consider fertilizing it, spraying it with a fungicide, or maybe even just cutting down and starting over. And although a fertilizer and a fungicide could help it short term, the biggest issue by far is that it is being almost completely shaded out by these big hackberries growing along the fence. Pruning these hackberries and providing more light to this apple tree is one of the easiest things and one of the most important things we can do to help this apple tree, and it's what we should do before we do anything else. And honestly, ideally, I would remove these hackberries. They grew up as volunteers in the fence row, which is not ideal, and these southern hackberries are a really big issue here in Tennessee. They're really susceptible to decay, and nearly every year when there's big windstorms, most of the tree work around the city is just cleaning up hackberries that have collapsed. However, I'm renting this space, and so, my hands are a bit tied. Most people know that light is really important for plants because they use it to photosynthesize, but it's easy to forget that the whole point of photosynthesis is to provide that tree with carbohydrates so it can go through the process of cellular respiration. Just like us, trees use cellular respiration in order to grow, reproduce, defend themselves against predators and diseases. So how much a tree photosynthesizes determines how much it's gonna grow, the flowers and fruits it produces, as well as its ability to fight off disease. In this regards, you can almost think of the leaves as solar panels that provide the tree energy. And honestly, everything that makes a tree a tree is to support these solar panels and provide the tree with energy. The twigs support the leaves, the branches support the twigs, the trunk support the branches, and even the roots anchor this top heavy structure to the ground and also pump up water to those leaves so that they're able to photosynthesize more. This creates a structure with tons of surface area to really maximize light capture, as well as putting those solar panels above the competition of other plants and out of the reach of predators. When it comes to the tree as a whole and how it responds to light, each branch and twig functions independently of the others. This means that the branches and twigs that photosynthesize more are gonna have more energy and therefore are going to grow bigger, produce more fruit, and be healthier. Inversely, the branches and parts of the tree that don't get as much sun exposure, therefore don't photosynthesize as much, aren't gonna grow as much and eventually will get shaded out and die. In nature where you don't have arborists or homeowners with pruners, light is the thing that determines the shape and size of the tree. This is apparent because the same species grown in different light conditions for example, a forest compared to a field or a yard is going to have a completely different shape. When we print a tree, we are directly affecting the amount of foliage and therefore the amount of energy available to that part of the tree and the tree as a whole. That gets us into some of the major mistakes that people make when they're pruning trees and how it basically boils down to not understanding trees and how they respond to light requirements. Probably the biggest mistake people make is pruning too much. When you prune really heavily, that is dramatically decreasing the amount of leaves that tree is gonna be able to support and therefore how much energy it's gonna be able to capture. And if we prune too much, that is going to lead to the decline of the tree. And if the tree's already declining, that can really just push it over the edge. Pruning really heavily will cause a tree to go into a stress response where it'll send up these vertical shoots from either where that cut was made along the branches or trunk or from the roots. This happens because there are dormant buds and photoreceptors underneath the bark running along all of the branches, the trunk, and even in the roots. These dormant buds are kept in check by a specific flow of auxin, which is the plant hormone that does a lot to control the growth of a plant, including influencing that plant to grow directly towards light. When we prune too much, it disrupts this flow of auxin and also opens up new areas of the tree to light that weren't exposed before, which triggers all these dormant buds to grow. And when they grow, it grows super rapidly. This is called epicormic growth, and these shoots are either called water sprouts, or if they come from the roots, suckers. Most times people just call both of them suckers. These really rapidly growing shoots take a lot of energy from the tree and also really compromise the structure. So a good rule of thumb is to remove as little material from the tree as possible while still achieving your objectives, but never prune more than a third of the overall foliage. And if the tree's struggling, it's gonna be dramatically less than that. Sometimes if you wanna save the tree, you have to compromise on your goals a bit, or prune in stages over the years so that you're not taking too much at once. Also, making proper pruning cuts is essential, and I'll go over that in my next video. One improper pruning technique that is really common, especially when people wanna reduce the height of a tree, is called topping, 
which is where you make a bunch of heading cuts. And that is where you prune the branch back to just a specific point, not determined by the tree structure or biology. And again, that usually results in removing too much material. And it also completely throws off that flow of oxygen that I was talking about before. And again, results in these really vertical water sprouts that overall are super weak and really compromise the structure of that tree and the overall longevity. With what we know about the importance of light and some specific ways the tree is going to respond, we might have a chance at saving this apple tree. Before we try anything else, we need to prune these hackberries away and provide more light to this apple tree. And hopefully that will make it so it grows more, is more resistant to disease, and hopefully actually produces apples. After we prune, if it doesn't show an improvement in its health, then it's time to explore potentially other options. And to be honest, in this case, it probably comes down a lot to tree selection. Apple trees in Nashville typically just don't do very well. But before we do anything else, we're going to address that big factor that clearly has resulted in a lopsided unhealthy tree and get this tree some more light. My next video, I'm actually gonna make cuts on these hackberries and on this apple tree. I'll go over the equipment I use and the techniques I use. And again, keeping in mind how important light is and how the tree's gonna respond to it. In my other video, I talked about tree biology and anatomy, which is also super important to understand before you start pruning. So go check out those videos, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.